Guys, GoHunt.com Insider is the title sponsor of this podcast. Get everything you need in one spot. Join Insider today. Find and plan your hunts more effectively than ever. Complete state coverage. See detailed information for every unit, every species, every hunt. Interactive maps. Quickly find hunts that meet your exact search criteria and explore them easily. Strategy articles. Learn new things and find hidden opportunities with exclusive articles. Species breakdowns. Top trophy units are hiding in plain sight. Find them with our statistics and historical data. Another great thing about GoHunt.com Insider is they have monthly giveaways that are worth 100,000 plus a year. Each month you will automatically be entered to win gear, tags, and hunts. That is if you're an Insider member. Past prizes include a $22,000 doll sheep hunt, uh, three Red Rock Precision Rifles with the $21,000 value, Uh, Five Zeiss Conquest HD binoculars with a $7,500 value. Not to mention this past July they gave away four hunts. An antelope hunt, two elk hunts, and a mule deer hunt. Join Insider today and get a $50 Kuyu gift card. All you have to do is go to gohunt.com forward slash insider. Click on the blue join now button. Use the promo code jscott at checkout. And GoHunt.com will send you a $50 Kuyu gift card. I want to thank GoHunt.com Insider for being the title sponsor of this podcast. Welcome to the J. Scott Outdoors podcast. Today we have a special guest. We have Dean Capiano from Swarovski Optic. Dean is the Director of Communications, and I've known Dean for some time. And we're fortunate to have him today because he's got all sorts of knowledge of everything that goes on with Swarovski Optic. He actually is the host of the Swarovski Optics uh, TV show, and I'm fortunate to have him. Dean, how are you doing? Good. How are you doing today, Jay? Oh, I'm doing great. Where have I caught you today? You have, believe it or not, you have actually caught me in my office one of the very few <laughs> times lately, but uh, getting some well-needed office time the last couple of weeks. Awesome, and I understand you just uh, uh, went uh, under the knife and, and uh, had uh, arthroscopic knee surgery? Yeah, um, I think it's all those years of climbing sheep hills and Probably a little bit to do with my athletic career when I was younger, but it all caught up with me, so I had to go in and get it all cleaned out. But uh, nice. It. How's it feeling now? You know, it's feeling great, and it's funny. The older you get, we uh, we scheduled surgery, so I'll be ready just in time for hunting season. Yeah, I mean, I I've, I've got to imagine when you went and talked to the doctor, you said, uh, yeah, "We'll do this as long as I can be ready for uh, for the new upcoming season." Yeah, as soon as the doctor's a good uh, family friend of mine, and he's a big fan of the TV show too. So I told awesome. him, I said, Doc, we got to schedule this, so I'm, I'm back ready to go. And uh, he knew the importance of it, that's for sure. And uh, Swarovski Optic uh, headquarters are in where, yep. New Hampshire? Nope, we're in Cranston, Rhode Island, and we handle all the sales and marketing for the U.S., Canada, and Mexico out of this office. But obviously the, the product and the worldwide headquarters is still over in Absam, Austria. Yeah, and um, what a beautiful place. I've had the opportunity several times to um, go out there and do some consulting with the guys in Absom and um, just a real class uh, uh, organization and company and um, just had a beautiful time there. The mountains are incredible. Got to see some of the uh, uh, chamois and um, just a, a real fun time there in Innsbruck uh, in the in the smaller town of Absom right there. Yeah, and that's one of the things. I mean, we know here in the U.S. how important optics are, but when you get to see the factory over there and see some of the views that they have out their office window, you understand it even more. So into optics and and really push the envelope as much as as much as they can. You know, um, one of the things that I really enjoyed there. Um, the several times that I've been back there uh, was getting to tour around in the in the factory, actually where they're putting 
all of this uh, great product together of Swarovski's. And, um, you know, it, 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 I, I've told people before, I mean, the factory is so clean. I mean, you feel like you could eat off the floors. I mean, everything is so organized. Um, and I was blown away with how, um, you know, the people there are just so nice. Yep. Um, very, I, I felt very comfortable there. And um, it was really neat to see how they're putting everything together. Yeah, and that's and that's also the big thing for me too. And and the thing that really sticks in my mind is when you go over to the factory, you see the cleanliness of it, but you see the pieces of the product that for whatever reason don't make our tolerances. They just get either you know they don't get thrown away. They get recycled in some sort of capacity. But it just amazes me every single time I see it. And I've been with the company 18 years that. If a certain piece of the product doesn't make the very high tolerance, it's not even put into the product. And uh, it's just, it really is a testament to how good the product is once it's completed. Yeah, and, and and you can tell that when you're there. I mean, everybody there is very, very friendly, but you can tell it's very, very serious. And, and, and everything is done with very, you know, lots of precision. Yep. And, you know, that speaks to the product. Um, you know, Swarovski Optic is has the best reputation of, of optics in, in the in the world and the reason is because it you know from the from the ground up uh, from every little piece uh, you can tell that you know precision is is key it's one of the things over the years for me that to be honest with you has been a little bit difficult because we as Americans were always so used to just running 90 miles an hour and getting things done and getting things out there and with with the Austrian optics way, a lot of times over the years, we didn't get product as quickly as we wanted it, or we were back ordered in a lot of situations. But it really is because we don't mass produce the product, and every single piece of glass that leaves that facility is 100% Swarovski optic. And it's just sometimes it takes a little longer, but at the end of the day, when it gets into the consumer hands, it's it's just awesome. Yeah, well worth it, uh, Dean. You mentioned you've been with Swarovski for 18 years. Uh, tell me a little bit how you started out with Swarovski, maybe what your role was and how it's progressed over the years. Yeah, I mean, it, it, uh, 18 years ago, my sister, who worked for Blue Cross, the local health uh, company, was doing the health coverage. And she said, well, the, that company that makes hunting products locally, they're hiring. And when I, the day that I walked into, into this company, we had, oh, about nine or ten people, and we were doing significantly less than what we're doing today dollar-wise. And uh, we've just grown over the years. And when I walked in, my position was was kind of customer service, training the reps, a uh, little bit of everything. Because I had hunted and fished my whole life, I, I kind of hit the ground running. And for the first several years, did a lot of training at our, our bigger dealers and some of our uh, our reps at the time, we had independent sales reps, so we did a lot of training. So a lot of my, my duties fell on that. And then as we started to grow and bring more of the PR and advertising in-house, uh, I just naturally gravitated towards that because this is what I came out of college with, the degree in marketing and finance. And, and now we have a staff of, of six or eight people doing uh, all of our marketing right here in the Cranston office. And uh, it's just uh, it certainly keeps us busy every day, that's for sure. That's awesome. And then in, in Cranston itself, are the products uh, put together at all there, or is everything put together back in Absom? It depends on the product. Uh, the binoculars and the spotting scope still come from Absom, ready to go uh, to be shipped to the U.S. dealers. But in the last several years, we between our repair facility here and our assembly facility, we do a lot of assembling of the rifle scopes. The way it works internationally is there's huge taxes and tariffs on bringing in full rifle scopes so it's actually less expensive for us to bring in still all these parts from austria but we do a lot of the assembly here not only does it allow us to control the quality even more it, it gives us uh, puts us in a great position to create u.s jobs which is really really nice yeah, absolutely. And then you mentioned something there, which I think Swarovski has set itself apart, and that's the warranty. Yep. And I will tell you a short story. Uh, the first pair of uh, Swarovski binoculars that I bought was a pair of 10 by 42 uh, SLCs. And at the time, uh, the outdoorsman's Chris Denham, I believe, was, uh, I want to say a rep or something yep. with Swarovski. 
And anyway, Dara and I got a pair of uh, 10 by 42. My hunting partner and I got a pair of 10 by 42 um, SLCs. And Dar was at the Black River in Arizona, and he, on his tripod, knocked the binoculars literally like a hundred yards off this cliff. They rolled all the way to the bottom, and when he got down there, there was not a single piece of glass that was not shattered and broke. And he thought, "Oh my gosh, what have I done?" And this goes way back. This is probably maybe twenty years ago, a long time ago, and. You know, he thought he just ruined, you know, we saved up forever just to buy the pair of binoculars, and then he thought he ruined them, and he sent them back to Swarovski because, you know, they had a warranty, and when they came back, I'm not kidding you, they looked brand new, and there was a laundry list, I mean, like a, a, a invoice attached that just went on and on and on about all the things that they repaired, and believe it or not, at that time, they did not charge anything. And from that point on, I have been a Swarovski optic, and so is Dar, a believer. Uh, that's what we have. That's what we carry in our packs. That's what we use. And um, I understand that the warranty situation, you know, you, you, you probably can't replace every last thing at no charge anymore. Mm-hmm. But tell me about the, the warranty, and I, I know it's the best in the business. Yep, and, that's- and it, it and that's what solidified my business 20 years ago. Yep, and that's one of the biggest things for for me and us over the years that, you know, you're you're buying a product, but you're really buying it for a lifetime. And the way we stand behind the product is, is really bar none in our industry. And it, it really at the beginning, when you're talking back 20 years, really put us on the map, and we've carried that through. Today, you know, we've got a lot of stories. One of my favorite ones is we had a guy who bought a a 10 by 42 SLC, and he had been saving up a long time for it, and he had it about two months, and his Labrador had gotten a hold of it and just chewed it like (laughs) a rawhide bone. And it came into our service department, and we completely replaced the binocular and then uh, sent the binoculars back with a box of milk bone dog biscuits. And uh, we had a lot of... (laughs) A lot of good response from that, but just a lot of things like that that can go wrong with the binoculars. We stand behind it 150 percent, and like you said, when you get them back, there's a laundry list of things that we go through, and we've had several calls over the years where people think they don't even get their binoculars back because so much has there, so much has been done, but it really does make huge fans of of the product, and people stand behind the product 150 percent, and. Certainly over the years, one of the biggest challenges that we have now is we've put so much product out in the field that it is a little more difficult to, you know, to have a completely no charge repair. Um, You know, we've got a lot of 15, 20, 25 year old product that's discontinued product that's still out in the field and we still have to manufacture the parts for that. But even nowadays, you know, I look at it over the, the course of 18 years that I've been here and we still charge pretty minimally. You know, a 20-year-old binocular may come in, and we may only charge someone $150, $200, and he would get a completely brand-new binocular back. So even some of the charges that we have nowadays are so minimal for the for the brand-new pair that you're getting. People are just... Uh, well, yeah, and completely justified. Yeah, I mean, it's completely justified to have a nominal fee because you're basically getting... I mean, I sent in a couple years ago a pair of 1050s that I had um, on one of the ocular lenses. I had totally dinged it, and it, you know, it, it had, you know, um, it, it just shattered basically. But it was still—I don't know what you would call that—but spider webbed basically. Yep. And they called me and said, "Jay, we can fix these. Uh, I think it was like fifty dollars or something for a new ocular lens, or maybe seventy-five dollars." But not only when they came back, I mean, my rubber, my rubberized um, uh, outer coating was completely, they had put new coating on it um, and put that new ocular lens. And so, like I said, I've uh, been a Swarovski guy for a long time. Um, I had the old uh, gray, I want to say it was maybe an AT80 spotting scope yep. and then went with the ST80 HD spotting scope uh, and then the STS80. And now I'm with the STX uh, 95 millimeter spotting scope. And um, let's talk a little bit about the spotting scopes and how one of the things that never ceases to amaze me is as good as the Swarovski products are, 
I always wonder how you guys can outdo yourself. And it, it you know, with this new, the STS 80 HD, I thought was so good. And I was honestly a little skeptical about the new modular system with the ATX and the STX. And it never ceases to amaze me how you guys can continue to get better and better. And honestly, the 95 millimeter uh, STX is it's with the 30 power, um, 30 to 70. It's the best spotting scope I've ever looked through, period. You know, and that's that's one of the things, even employees inside the company, we kind of shrug our shoulders when they come out, when we come out with something new and we think, well, how can this possibly get better? Or we start to catch wind of a new product, a new spotting scope coming and it's even better. And th that 95, you know, is amazing to me because when I first heard about that 95, before I saw it, I thought, well, this is just going to be too big and too bulky for, for guys to want to carry out in the field and put in their backpack. But once I saw the scope and so much was made about the modularity aspect of that scope to be able to switch, use the same eyepiece and have either the 65, the 85 or the 95, we focused a lot on the modularity. But what happens is that that 95 and obviously the 85 and the 65, but you really see it in the 95 is so good optically that a lot of hunters, especially the Western guys, are buying that scope. They're you know yes, it is a little it's a, it's bigger than what people were used to previous to that. Everyone was so used to carrying a 65 on these sheep hunts, but really it's changed hunters' way of thinking a little bit that they would rather take the extra weight just because. That scope is so phenomenal optically. It just it's you don't want to give up that that performance. Yeah, you know what I've really enjoyed using it for, um, and I used the STS eighty HD before that um, was uh, digiscoping, yep. and I've been using now for um, all of last season um, sheep, sheep scouting and and coos deer hunting and what have you. I used that TLS Apo adapter that you guys make and i plug in my canon sl1 point and shoot camera it's, it's a little more than a point and shoot but um the images that i'm able to get out of that 95 uh, millimeter is phenomenal i mean uh, even going back to the sts 80 hd once you got up that was a 20 by 60 um eyepiece and once you got about above 50 um, it seemed as though your clarity went down somewhat. So when I got the 95 with the 30 by 70 uh, power eyepiece, um, I had some sheep way out there and I cranked it all the way to 70 and I was just blown away at how there is very little distortion. And it seems as though uh, the 20 to 60 eyepiece, now the 30 to 70, I was curious in that 60 to 70 range yep. how much you would actually lose. And I'm not sure if it's with the big um, objective, you know, with the 95 millimeters letting so much light in, but the, the images even on 70 power digiscoping are, are fantastic. Yeah, and I think that's significantly helped, especially in the hunting market, to expose more people to the whole digiscoping thing. I and mean, we, we've done it for a long time, and I think, that, you know, our other side, our naturalist birding market, they picked up on, on the digiscoping thing a little faster, but... The change we've seen with this 95 being out there, it's so good optically that, you know, you can take a, a decent camera that everybody's got nowadays and get some pretty amazing shots. And it really has changed the game as far as scouting and preseason work and all that stuff. And it's really exciting. I see a lot of your photos on your Instagram page, but even other places where people are taking photos, it, it's amazing to see some of the stuff that the guys are getting now. Yeah, absolutely. And you mentioned there um, kind of the birding and, and uh, some of the animal uh, wildlife watching. Uh, t talk to me a little bit about this segment of business with Swarovski. You've got the hunting, you've got the bird watching. Uh, I, I didn't realize how big of a market uh, the bird watching is. Is it a 50-50 deal or, or how would you say that usually plays out? You know, it's one of those things. I mean, I'm a lifelong hunter, so I always kind of side on the hunter, hunting side of things. But when we started really getting aggressive with the birding market, they would say, well, there's 50 million birders in the U.S., but really, at the end of the day, our market is still, our core market is still for hunters. We're still about 70 or 75% in the hunting market. Yes, the birding crowd is is growing, and, and there's definitely a, a good stronghold there. But um, at the end of the day, hunting is still our bread and butter, and it's where we spend a lot of time. That was the one frustrating thing with me in the whole digiscoping thing 
you know, where several years ago we were promoting it as much as we can. It just didn't seem like it, it took off with the hunters. And I, I just thought, wow, you know, I mean, preseason scouting and all this stuff that these guys do would be perfect. Now they're going home with great photos, but it really has grown exponentially in the last two years. And I think the, the modular scope had a lot to do with it, but uh, it, it really is a huge tool in the field. Yeah, and for those listeners out there, um, explain the module. I'll let you explain the modular system, uh, 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 kind of a layman's term on the modular system from my point of view is I can have the same body, the 95 millimeter body, and I can put, uh, or excuse me, I can have the 30 to 70 eyepiece and I can put different bodies and, and vice versa. Explain yep. to my listeners how the modular system works. Yeah, basically, the way the, the modular system came out was you, you are able to buy one of the eyepieces, whether it's the angled eyepiece or the straight eyepiece, whatever you prefer, and then be able to switch out either the 95 millimeter objective or the 85 or the 65 so you've got three options and you know going into that whole project the 80 millimeter scope was our best selling scope so we thought okay the 85 is going to be one of our best sellers but really what's happened is the 95 is is so good optically a lot of hunters are going to the 95 and if they're buying a second one then they go to the 65 because when you disengage the 95 millimeter objective and take the 65 in the eyepiece it's amazing how small it packs up into a backpack. So if you're still one of those hunters that just is so focused on weight and size, then having that 65 in your pack is, is really, it's it's the size of a decent sized binocular at this point, rather than, you know, having to deal with the spotting scopes we used to deal with 10 or 15 years ago. And so the application that I can see with that in, say, a coos deer application is you're kind of down, say, on the desert floor and you're glassing up on the mountain and you see a big buck and um, you're like, okay, we're going to go after that buck. And let's say you're down by the trucks or the rangers or quads or what have you. You can very easily just with basically the turn of a hand take the 95 a millimeter objective off and put the 65 millimeter objective put it in your pack and off you go on your stock and um i mean it's that simple yep quick and easy and you know i use the sheep example just because i've had the sheep itch the last several years is you know i'll put my 65 in my pack that i know i'm going to take up the hill when i'm down on the horses or down at the tent i'll have, i'll be using the 95 but then when we take off up the hill i i just literally press a button and disengage the eyepiece from the objective, leave the 95 there, and, and uh, carry a lot less weight up the hill. And t talk to me a little bit about um, the eyepieces. Um, you've obviously got the 30 to 70, but you also have some fixed eyepieces. And tell me the applications in which, uh, rather than a variable uh, eyepiece, that a uh, fixed would be uh, ideal? Yeah, some of the older fixed powers, I mean, to be honest with you, we're selling the, the variables a heck of a lot more than than the fixed. But, um, you know, people still like a 30-power eyepiece. We used to sell a lot of them. But, um, you know, to be really honest with you, we're, we're selling most of that, that 20 to 60 more than anything at this point. Yeah, and... Um, uh, have you heard about this new thing where a lot of the guys, there's a handful of guys out west that are taking your spotting scopes and, and doing a twin spotting scope setup and um, uh, putting the spotting scopes together and using them as binoc like binoculars? Yeah, it's one of those things that, that, that uh, you know, I think early on, it's funny, you know, we, we look at that as a company and early on we thought, oh, okay, well, they're buying two spotting scopes, which is good. But then we were thinking about doing an adapter, and we just, you know, we never really got into it. And then I started using a couple with some guys out west that I know that have them, and it's just absolutely awesome when you really get it rigged up perfectly. But, uh, yeah, that that whole uh, thing has been around for, for quite some time now, and, and uh, I've used it several times, and it really is a huge advantage. I had one set up down in uh, Mexico when we were doing some coos deer hunting a few years ago, and it makes a huge difference. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, Dean, tell me about the new X5 rifle scopes coming out. And, um, you know, with the Z5 and the Z6 being such a huge hit, uh, tell me what you think uh, your projections are as far as how people are going to love this X5 rifle scope and what the 
what the qualities of that are. Yeah, I mean, I've been excited about the X5 for several years now as we've been developing it. It's one of those things you have, I'm sure you and your listeners have seen the huge exponential growth in long distance shooting, long distance hunting. And, you know, as much as our Z5 and Z6 have been great, we, we needed a specific scope that was really designed, you know, for that 1,000, 1,500 yard type shooting. And the X5 for us was a complete new turret system in other words we didn't take you know the really good turrets that we had already in our ballistic turret or even just our regular turrets it was a complete redesign new system new spring retention system um that was a long time in the making and in this scope we just launched uh this spring i just had the opportunity to to uh shoot some real long distance with it uh several weeks ago and it just is an amazing scope and for me this kind of scope, um, it's great to sit down in a rifle and I hit a, you know, hit a nine inch target at 1800 yards and it's awesome to shoot that far. But for me, the real test on this scope was I sat down at a range and I shot target, I shot targets at 200 yards and I dialed it right up at, to 900 yards, hit the targets, dialed it back to 300 yards, hit the target, dialed it back to 600. For me as a hunter, yeah, I love shooting long distance. But, you know, there are limitations to how far I'll shoot at an animal, specifically a trophy. So the fact that you can dial within those, you know, long-range hunting-type conditions and be that accurate back and forth was the real test for me. And uh, just super excited about the X5. Yeah, I know it's uh, it's been a big buzz lately with the X5s coming out. And certainly uh, most all hunters uh, would you know, they want that scope that they can, you know, shoot at 300 or dial to 900 or dial to 650 and be right on. And, and, um, you know, not everybody's set up to, you know, shoot like a sniper and, and, and mainly people just want to be able to dial and shoot. Um, so I'm excited for those coming out. Um, Tell me about the new EL range. Uh, I, I ha- have the uh, the older EL range, yep. uh, the new generation. Uh, tell me about some of the changes that have been made and, and uh, what you've been noticing with those new EL range. Yeah, and this is one of those products that I feel like we really listen to our consumer. As good as a reputation as the EL range has had over, ye- over the years, there were just a few little things with the binocular that – we saw, you know, not necessarily complaints about, but we just wanted to improve. And with the new EO range, the biggest thing was, um, number one, we changed the way that the strap connects to the product. And, and uh, it's just a lot more simple and easy to use. And that was one of the things that I often joked that was one of the hardest parts of my job was to get to a hunt and, and put those straps on the older binoculars. <laughs> Um, but so we changed that where it's got just a a little locking mechanism. It kind of is a bayonet type mount where the strap goes in a lot easier. It'll have adapters to go to bino suspenders and other straps that are out there that we know people like to use. And then the biggest thing for me was we changed the objective covers that actually attach to the binoculars. I think over the years, you know, people lose objective covers where they just pull off the front end. Well, now they're actually attached right to the product and kind of fit nice and snug right inside those lens barrels. So I think uh, some of those features are, are going to really be, you know, make the experience for EL owners a lot better. And the uh, angle compensation and the range finding device itself uh, has has there been any changes in that, or is that pretty much the same? That's pretty much the same. I mean, we didn't change that too much. We didn't see uh, a need for that. We did change uh, the button a little bit. The, so the button to activate the rangefinder is a little bit more raised, and it has a circle on there because one of the things we found in, in cold weather, it just uh, we needed a little more of something to, to per, be able to press. So uh, we've got a new button, which uh, is a lot more comfortable with heavy gloves in cold weather. Awesome. Um, And then I'd like to talk about uh, one of my favorite pair of binoculars. Uh, I have the 10 by 42 ELs, the the 10 by 42 EL range. Um, I I have the 10 by 50 older SLCs, um, but I I got a pair of 12 by 50 um, and ELs, and they're they're fantastic. Yep. 
I, you know, and it was hard for me because being out west, I used the, I've had every generation of 15s that you guys had, and I'm a big believer in the 10 ELs, and, you know, I got to be honest, those 1250s, a lot of times, even on cooster hunts, uh, find, find their way into my pack um, because you, you've got a wider field of view, and I just think it's the perfect mix between, you know, long-range glassing and, and still closer to the 10s. Yep. What has been your experience with those? Here's, here's the thing with those binoculars, and I say this from a perspective that I literally can sign out any pair of binoculars to use on these hunts, and 90% of the time I use those 1250s for the same reasons that you just said. And for me, it's it's kind of it's not the best of both worlds. In other words, like you said, it's tough for you to give up your 15, but it's 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 the nice piece of both worlds. It gives me the the same kind of performance in the same close to the same kind of size as the 1042, but gives me some of that long distance 15 performance kind of puts me right in the middle. So it gives me the best of both worlds. And for me, like you said, on a lot of these long distance hunts, I, you know, I'll sacrifice the extra two or three power because the twelves I can still hold comfortably. I don't necessarily need a tripod. You've got the optical performance. You've got the field of view. Um, you've got that 50 millimeter objective, which is pulling in a lot of light. So that binocular to me has everything you need. And, and I, I use it the most. I mean, yeah, I, there are certain situations that I'll, I'll use some of the smaller ones and all that. But when I'm, when I'm hunting those, those 12 by fifties are pretty much in my pack. Yeah, it's a phenomenal binocular. I've really enjoyed using them. I used them on cooster hunts and sheep hunts last year and actually right before my December sheep hunts last year, I actually upgraded and got the new 15 by 56 SLCs. And once again, uh, you know, having every generation of 15s, you know, I've, I've had every generation that you guys have made and it's amazing. People ask me, well, what do you think of the new ones? And I say, they're better. Yeah. And they say, well, what do you mean they're better? Well, they're better. Well, how are they better? Look through them. They're yeah. better. They're, they're clearer. They're, and they say, well, how can you be clearer than the older generation? Tell me, uh, what, you, what do you tell people? I mean, it's, it's really hard to pinpoint, but they're just better. The yeah. new 15s are better than the old. I think with me at the end of the day, and, and you know, I get asked the question a, a lot of why are you guys so expensive? And, you know, bottom line, we are. And, and you can look at weight and you can look at field of view and you can look at all the technical features of the binocular. But for me, it always comes back to the quality of the glass and the quality of the coatings on the lenses. That what's what allows the light to transmit it. What it's what allows for, for it to the, you know, the next generation to be a little bit clearer. And yes, we're always making improvements on trying to be more lightweight and trying to be more compact. But again, at the end of the day, it's always about pushing the envelope for us as a company to get better at, you know, the quality of, of coatings that are on the lenses, how we handle the prisms, all that stuff that is so important as far as the color, the clarity, the light transmission, everything optically in that binocular. And I think that's, you know, with us as a company, that's what we're always pushing forward. Is there a little bit better way to do it? Is there a little bit way to squeeze a little bit more light out of this binocular? And, and you know, you've been around optics long enough that there's a lot of things that happens to light between that objective lens and your eyes. And, and if you can improve it, you know, 2% here, 3% there as it goes through, any little bit helps. And I think that's the one thing that, for me, we always need to keep pushing the envelope. Yes, we always need to worry about weight and comfort and all that's important. But at the end of the day, if our customer can see it, then, then it helps us significantly. Yeah, and I mean, I I break it down to as simple as it's the Swarovski wow factor. Yep. I mean, when you put a pair of Swarovskis, whatever they might be, up to your eyes, you get that wow factor. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I have not looked through some of your competitors' binoculars. But what I will tell you is that I can I, I can use any binoculars I want. I mean, Swarovski does not pay me to say that I love Swarovski or anything. Yep. I love Swarovski because you have the wow factor and you know, every time I look at a competitor's glass, when I pull it up, it just does not have the wow factor that Swarovski always has. And you 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 mix that with the fact that they have the best customer service and warranty uh, out there on the market, and and that you know you guys are continuing to push the envelope with with making things better. And that leads to my next question of, you know, 
how do you how do you keep pushing the envelope and 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 making things better? I mean, from a from a consumer perspective, it just blows me away that you guys can keep getting better and better and better. It, I mean, I just don't know how you get better than the 95 millimeter spotting scope per se, or say the 1250 EL or even the 15s. Um, what is it in the company that that continues to push the envelope? I can't tell you that. We'd be giving away secrets at that point. <laughs> um, but no, I guess from me, a, a, what's that? I guess from a standpoint of you know how does Swarovski continue to push the envelope and why? Just wanting to be better? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we always want to. You know, our corporate philosophy is to constantly improve what is good, and I think that's just at the core of everything. And from what I've seen specifically over the last oh, I don't know, five or six years is that a lot of these younger engineers that are coming up in Austria just find a better way to do things. And and it's like you said, you look at some of the product we have at this point or have had over the years and you you think, well, how can that even get better? And then there's just some either a, a lighter system, a better way to attach a, a different, um, you know, a different way to – manufacture things there's all different kinds of things that go into it but i think you know you really see it with our rifle scopes that we've been able to you know go from a z3 to a z5 to a z6 and still maintain these huge field of views and things like that and really that that has just happened over the years and and without going to a you know a 34 millimeter tube and just making the tube bigger to get these same optics in there we just find a better way and you know, I thank God every day that I work for a company that does push the envelope like that. You know, I know as a company, we need to push the envelope. New. Um, you were talking about pushing the the company pushing the envelope and yeah, continuing no, to strive I, to be. I think with me, and I have this philosophy, and I think the company as well, it's just we just have this underlying drive to just constantly keep pushing the envelope on product. And I think we all feel that new product is the key to to staying out in front of the whole optics race, so to speak, with our competition. And and again, like like what you said with the wow factor, nothing proved that to me more than the X5 rifle scope. Because when we came out with this, the first thing that I did was take some of our competition scope in that particular category and just go to the range and ring it out. And, and to be honest with you, our competition makes some good product technically in in the way it shoots and things like that but when you look through the glass and you're looking at a a nine inch target at a thousand yards you can see the difference it's night and day and that's where i feel like the x5 is going to totally outperform some of our competition because it's better technically but then when you look through the glass it, it gives you that wow factor that's awesome i can't wait for that um Dean, tell me a little bit about the TV show and uh, the creation of the TV show and, and maybe, you know, how many seasons have you been doing it and some of the adventures that you that it's taking you through. Yep, I mean, the TV show is definitely, uh, uh, you know, my baby. I, we started it, uh, we'll be going into season six, and, you know, I've been handling the marketing long enough that we've sponsored other TV shows, and, you know, while we've had some really good partners over the years, I think I just got to the point where I, you know, I felt like, we need to tell the Swarovski story a little bit more. We need to come up with a show that's entertaining for people. It doesn't push too much product, but it really just puts our product in situations where it performs at its best. And that, and that's the approach I take with the show. I, you know, to be honest with you, I see too much TV out there that's way too commercialized and way too sponsor driven. And, you know, I always felt with our show is I just want to tell the story. Yes, we have some partners, um, that we we work with but I never want to get too crazy with sponsors so we go on adventures we try to put the product in situations that um, we can show how it performs so we don't have to stand there and make it an infomercial and we try to make it entertaining and you know at the end of the day I I did feel like we you know at one point uh, I wanted to take some of the starch out of our brand so to speak I think you know, people didn't really see the inside, didn't see that we have hunters here, didn't see that, you know, the reason why we come up with such good product is we've got people out in the field, and and uh, I just wanted to be able to tell those stories, and it's been going really well. The last several years, we've been one of the top-rated show on the Outdoor Channel, and uh, we'll start airing again here in July. We've got some really good shows this year. I did my finally did my stone sheep hunt last year that we got the whole thing on film so i'm really excited to show that we just finished the final edit on that yesterday so 
Uh, should be a really good show. We went back down to Argentina with Stag and um, did some hunting in Texas for Audad. So we've got some really good shows, and uh, TV has been a really good way for us to, uh, you know, just just give our consumer an inside look at the brand. That's awesome, and and uh, it is a great show, and you do a great job hosting it. Um, and I want to bounce back to something you just said. Um, I can attest to even over in Austria, the, the the people that are putting this stuff together and designing these, the 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 Swarovski products are hunters. I mean, uh, in in the three times that I've been back there, um, y- you know, I have conversations every time with 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 employees of the company about hunting and their hunting and you know red deer and chamois and 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 all the adventures that they go on so you know absolutely i can attest that uh you know you guys are hunters you're building products for hunters and um you know just a um that's a you know testament to to you know the the sacrifice that you guys make to to, to make a good product, but you, you're not a company that's not hunters. I mean, you guys are all hunters, and I think that's very important. And that's and that is huge for me. And I think you really see it with the with the new EL range is the fact that even let's forget optics for a sec. We know that we push the envelope for optics. People can see it, but even right down to the accessories. And I would drive people nuts. And I, I bet in some of your talks over the years, you probably drove them nuts too. Where I would I'd be sitting. You know, I'm a big whitetail hunter. I'd be sitting in a deer blind and you know, the, just the, the objective covers on the binoculars, I felt like we're making too much noise. So, I, you know, I did this huge report like, all right, our, our product is awesome, but we still we need to make these objective lenses a little more quiet. And, you know, the engineers would look at me like, really, what, what, <laughs> what, is, what are you smoking over there or what's going yeah. on? But, you know, even down to those little, little details for me is so, so important because, you know, a hunter goes out and he spends $2,000 on a pair of binoculars. And, yeah, and he can, he's sitting in a whitetail blind and he can see the deer great. But if his, if his covers are making too much noise, if there's anything like me, it will drive him absolutely nuts. So I think even down to that level, and I think that's as good of an example as the optics are just the fact that we've, you know, we've listened to our consumer, you know, I've been pounding on people's stores for about a year now to, to change the, 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 the makeup of the covers, to make them quiet, just little things like that that can enhance the brand experience just as much as, as the optics can. Absolutely. Um, for sure. Dean, uh, what do you have on your slate this fall? Um, have you drawn any hunts or do you have any hunts planned that are, um, you know, you're excited about what do you have going on, uh, for the TV show and for you personally? Yeah, no, I didn't, I didn't draw anything, uh, major this year. We've got some good hunts planned. I'm headed to, uh, Hawaii in about a month to film some shows over there. So we're going to do a nice adventure hunt, um, over there. I know we've got like a mouflon sheep and stuff. Yeah, or bar- we're doing, uh, uh, axis deer, um, I think we're doing Axis Dia, Mouflon, and a couple of the goats over there. So it should be a really, awesome. really cool show. And then uh, you know, we've got a mountain goat hunt planned in, in B.C. So we'll, uh, we went up there a few years ago and tried to get it done, but we couldn't, uh, couldn't connect. So we're going to go back up and, and try and get that done. And then uh, I know we're headed to Alaska this year for our Sitka Blacktail once, uh, once the weather gets a little colder. And uh, so we've got some really good trips planned. And, you know, with the hunts for TV, we, we, like I said before, we try to put ourselves in situations to use the product, but we also try to tell a nice story and, and make it a, an epic journey as well. That's awesome. And you guys do a great job. I, I want to thank you for being on with us today. And, um, uh, you know, I just, uh, I've been a Swarovski fan for years and, and you guys never cease to amaze me. And um, anybody that, comes in and looks in my backpack they're they're always going to see Swarovski and um, the quality is uh, unmatched in my opinion and I uh, just hats off to you guys for making such a great product and wish you the best on your upcoming season of your TV show and on your new shoots this fall uh, w- uh, hope you uh, stay safe and and have good hunts and I look forward to seeing you down at the shows um, uh, what what are some of the shows that people can find uh, the Swarovski booth at um, coming up? Yeah, we do all the major ones. I think um, for this year, the hunting shows have kind of slowed down, so we'll pick it up, um, you know, in January with, with the SHOT Show and Safari Club International and the Rocky Mountain Elk Show and 
Uh, so we'll, uh, we do quite a few shows throughout the year, but those are the big ones that'll kick in in January and February and, uh, and then certainly carry through the NRA show as well. Awesome. Well, I can't wait to see these X5 rifle scopes. And until I talk to you next time, uh, God bless you. And, and I just, uh, wish you the best of success. Thanks for being on with us. Great. Thanks for having me on and I appreciate everything. All right, Dean, you take care. All righty. Have a good one. Guys, I want to tell you about one of the sponsors of this podcast. DeadeyeOutfitters.com is a lifestyle hunting apparel company for hunters by hunters. Check out episode 45 of this podcast with one of the owners and you'll see what I mean. Deadeye Outfitters makes quality t-shirts, sweatshirts, and hats designed with hunters in mind. Deadeye Outfitters has the only license for creating Boone and Crockett apparel. Use the J. Scott promo code and receive a 10% discount on all purchases at DeadeyeOutfitters.com. Thanks for listening to the J. Scott Outdoors Western Big Game Hunting and Fishing Podcast brought to you by GoHunt.com Insider. Use the promo code J. Scott and receive a $50 Kuyu gift card when signing up for the GoHunt.com Insider. Research faster, hunt more, go to GoHunt.com forward slash insider and join today.